The NASCAR Canadian Tire Series has returned to Kawartha Speedway for the 11th and final race of the season, and four drivers still have a chance at the championship. It has been a fast and furious summer of NASCAR racing here on TSN. Canada's best stock car drivers have waged an intense battle for the 2015 championship. Current points leader and three-time champion Scott Steckley has dominated on the short tracks with three dramatic victories. While the Mopar number 27 of Andrew Ranger, the number three of Jason Hathaway, and the number 47 of LP Dumoulin, all challenging for the big prize, all with a late season charge. Today, we wave the checkered flag for the final time and crown the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series champion. Welcome to Kawartha Speedway in the heart of Kawartha Lakes region. We're just south of Peterborough, Ontario as Pinty's presents the Fall Classic, the 11th and final event on the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series calendar. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Billy Rouse Jr. Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey are both patrolling the pitch for us here today. Billy, nine seasons of NASCAR Canadian Tire Series racing and we've always concluded the season here at Kawartha Speedway. Many of those occasions, weather has been a factor and it is again here today. Of course, NASCAR in the background getting this track dried. We will get the show in and when it does go, it's going to be a good one. It's always a barn burner here, and why not? One of the best 3 8 facilities in town. I mean, great camping, great dining, and oh, by the way, great racing, and we're going to crown a champion here today at Kawartha Downs. Absolutely. As we talked off the top of the show, we have four potential champions in this race here today. Four drivers with a shot at it. Scott Steckley has the lead with 403 points, but if you look back one position, a tie for second. Both Jason Hathaway and Andrew Ranger, nine points back and LP Dumoulin last year's champion still has a shot at it yeah but the, for for Dumoulin to have a real shot the front three guys got to load up and go home and we know that's not going to happen so it's all about those three cats up front you know you got Hathaway and Ranger just nine points back of Steckley that's where our championship's going to come from and with more on this title hunt let's set it down trackside and check in with Todd who's standing by with your points leader Todd thanks Dave Three-time national champion Scott Steckley is very familiar with the pressures that this day brings. However, the 43-year-old from Milverton, Ontario, has done his best all season long to make it easy on himself. He's led more laps than anyone in the series, a total of 1,042. That's 900 more than his nearest competitor. Scott also has three victories on the season, a sweep of the Western events, plus an earlier victory as well. And Scott, we've had a few weeks off since our last race at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. What have you done to get ready for this final race? Uh, we came out here to Kawartha Speedway and we tested, uh, made sure the car was where we wanted it to be for today. Um, we've obviously checked every nut and bolt on the car. Uh, we made a lot of spare parts and uh, we're just here going for the win tonight. Going for the win tonight and Guy Scott Steckley will start on the pole position. In fact, set a new track qualifying record during qualifying laps earlier this afternoon. Safe to say if he finishes fourth or better, the title is his no matter what anybody else does. Thanks, Todd. And Billy, if he does win, this will put him in some pretty elite company. He'll be only the second active but 10th driver overall in history to win four championships in a NASCAR regional touring division. Well, he's put himself in pretty good company for sure. But you got to remember, their oval track program is spot on. He's won here in the past, and that 22 crew, they got it going on. Their oval track program, you're right, has been spot on all season long. Their short track program has been even better. You can argue that he has taken away that short track king crown from the number three of Jason Hathaway, who's been so good on these tight ovals. And Jason Hathaway, no slouch, sitting second in points, is standing by trackside with the newest member of our TSN crew, Clinton Jeffrey, who's with the Uxbridge native. Thanks, Dave. Good to be here. Jason Hathaway comes into this final event with two wins under his belt, the most recent coming at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. That gives him a chance to contend for the title here today. Jason, Dave was just talking about how Steckley might have taken your short track crown away. Are you and your team ready to steal that back here this afternoon? Yeah, we're going to give it a heck of a try, that's for sure. Yeah, Scott's been real good on the ovals this year, and uh, we got a win up in Chaudier, so we've, we've got a win under our belt too. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully we can get the front here. Him and I can battle this thing out with Andrew and uh, put on a great show for the fans. Good luck today, Jason. He starts fourth here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. And watch for Jason. He got his first win here at Kawartha in 2008. Thanks, Clinton. Andrew Ranger has two national championships to his name, but the 28-year-old from Roxon Pond, Quebec, has a brand new trophy case, and he'd be happy to add a third. Andrew, you had a pretty solid season. 
Some consistent top five finishes, a terrific victory at St. Eustache, but you start 10th today. What do you have to do to get to the front and maybe snag that championship? You know what? I think everybody are working hard, but uh, today the crew of Mopar, they are really working hard, and we, we start 10 tonight, so it's got to be very interesting to see. I think we are a pretty good, 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 good car and fast car, so uh, I, I want to win, definitely, and I want to win a third championship. Good luck, Andrew. Thank you very much. Andrew Ranger looking to move up tonight, maybe capture another national championship. Perhaps a few cautions through this race will give him the opportunity if that field keeps getting bunched up. Thanks, Todd. And Billy, the contenders are ready. The gloves are coming off, but they'll be racing on a very different track than they practiced on earlier today. Well, every race they get right at it, but more importantly in this one with a green racetrack, you got to get that car going, get a feel for it so you can tell your crew chief what adjustments to make because this is a halfway break race at lap 125. They're all going to come down pit road, make those all important adjustments and get right at it. The last 125 is going to be good. And of course, we'll be watching another race, the quest for the Jostens Rookie of the Year. We'll crown that champion here today as well. And it's been tight all season long between the 59 of Gary Clute, started the season off on the right foot. Of course, the big win at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. He has a, has a five point lead over the 99 of Marc Antoine Cameron, who's had some mechanical difficulties here today. Well, he's had some trouble, but he's been branded a road course racer, Dave. And on the oval, he's proved them all wrong. He's been getting right at it and he'd love that rookie championship, but he's got some struggles here today. You can almost argue that he's been better on the ovals this year than he has been on the road courses. When we return, we will get you set for the wave of the green flag on the grand finale, the Pinty's 250 here at Kawartha Speedway on TSN. The NASCAR Canadian Tire Series finale from Kawartha Speedway is brought to you by Canada's best store fixtures. Make your engine titanium strong with Castrol Edge. By Mopar, authentic performance. And by Pelican Products, a global leader in high performance protective case and lighting solutions. And there is your points litter and pole sitter for the Pinty's 250. Scott Steckley taking the walk, but he, he looks loose. He should be, Dave. He put that car in the front row, taking all the pressure off for the start of this race. Starting in the second spot is 15-year-old Caden Lapsovich from Grimsby, Ontario. As the drivers prepare, let's look back at the past 10 events. The 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series schedule consisted of 11 events, playing out on a variety of oval and road course circuits. Race one from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park roared as the main long weekend marked the start to the racing season. This iconic raceway showcases the talents and entertainment of this truly national series. With one quarter to go, Scott Steckley and Andrew Ranger tangled as they sped to the finish line. Rookie Gary Clute drove through the smoke and took his first career NASCAR win. Next up, the series ventured into Quebec. The quarter-mile Autodrome Chaudier was the stage for a larger-than-life shootout and the Series 100th start. Jason Hathaway and his Team 3 Red Chevrolet would emerge victorious at the end of 300 hard-fought laps. Sunset Speedway in Innisfil, Ontario welcomed NASCAR in mid-June. The packed house witnessed a 300-lap event with only two cautions. Alex Tagliani took charge and would rewrite the record book, lapping the entire field. It was Tag's first win on an oval. July was a busy month for the Tour. First up was the road course at Circuit Icar in Mirabel, Quebec. The 100-kilometer race sped by quickly as the field watched their manners, this time completing all 30 laps caution-free. Kevin Lacroix, the 26-year-old from St. Eustache, Quebec, masterfully drove to victory lane in only his second career NASCAR start. Only six days later, the Tour trucked to Edmonton International Raceway. Hathaway held a slim points lead over Clute and Steckley going into race five. In the past four events, four separate winners had emerged. The number 22 Canadian tire machine of Scott Steckley would continue that streak. His Dodge proved tough, outpacing the competition. Four days and one province later, the series set up shop in Saskatoon for a midweek showdown. This fast two-lane dream held court under a ravenous sky. The bad weather held off while Stackley stormed to the front, taking win number two and control of the points lead. Race seven was hosted by Autodrome St. Estache. This flat four-tenths of a mile oval is a tough, grinded-out journey. 
The 22 Canadian Tire Dodge of the reigning points leader, Scott Steckley, dominated the night, which was highlighted by some short track scars. Steckley led for the majority, but a broken axle set up a green-white checker shootout, eventually won by Andrew Ranger for his 20th career win. As August began, the series headlined at the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières. The stout field held court and showed why they are the main show. Ranger and Lacroix ruled the streets and a last lap bump and run, concluding with a half-mile drag race gave Lacroix his biggest win of his career. Riverside Speedway in Antigonish, Nova Scotia hosted race number nine. Steckley held a slim lead over Ranger in the points, but it was Kennington who was fast early. The 22 Canadian Tire Dodge of Scott Steckley finding its stride got into an unfair rhythm and lapped nearly the entire field on his way to a third win. Race 10 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park witnessed names like Lapsovich, Tagliani, Ranger, Dumoulin, Scannell, and Lacroix on top of the leaderboard. Yet at the finish line, it was an emotional Jason Hathaway who snuck in for the victory, setting up a three-way points battle for the 2015 championship. And Billy, here we go. An amazing year with three drivers in the hunt. Stackley going for a fourth championship, Ranger for his third, and Jason Hathaway on deck for his first. Well, there's a good look at the Uxbridge native right there. Jason Hathaway looking for his first championship, and he'd love to get it done here today. And Hathaway will be our E3 Spark Plugs in-race reporter for tonight's race. Jason White making his second start. And let's send it down trackside for tonight's command. Andrea and Shelly to give tonight's command. Drivers, start your engines! <laughs> Sound of beauty, a good look at Scott Steckley and Andrew Ranger as they fire their machines. Kate Lapsovich now preparing to fly his family's number and colors as the future of Lapsovich Racing. And there's James Van Domsler, we'll ride on with him. He's all the way from Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. We have three drivers from Alberta and drivers from right across the country in the field today. Dave, let's check in with our E3 in-race reporter, Jason Hathaway, Billy Rose in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, go ahead, Billy. Jason, I know it's been a long couple weeks since that last big win at Mossport. I know you've been busy in the race shop. Does all that nervousness go away now that you're belted in and got that motor fired to life? Yeah, for sure. We're ready to get this thing going here and uh, see how it all shakes out. Uh, 250 laps here is a pretty long race, so we'll get after it and see if we can win this thing. Come out of here with all my crew happy for the winner. All right, Jason, good luck today, and we'll talk to you more throughout the race. Thanks, for Billy. Thanks, bud. The 109th race in series history, and that man, Jason Hathaway, has been there every step of the way as the cars prepare to roll off, sitting pretty on the front stretch here at Kawartha Speedway. We'll take a look at the CBSF starting grid. On pole is Scott Steckley in the 22. Caden Lapsovich, the future of NASCAR in the 76 to the outside. Another piece of the future, the 59 of Gary Clute and Jason Hathaway sit in row number two. Row three has LP Dumoulin, last year's champion, and Mark Dilley behind the wheel of the 0-2. Row number four has Joey McComb in the 25 and DJ Kennington in the Castro Dodge. Row number five has Alex Tagliani in the 18. Andrew Ranger, a little work to do here today in the 27. Row six, Dwayne Baker in the nine. Anthony Simone makes his return in the 95. Taking a look back to row number seven, Matthew Skinnell in the 56 and Josh Collins behind the wheel of the 87. James Van Domselaar joins us in the 14 in row number eight. Kevin Lacroix in the 74 is in there too. The 04 of JF Dumoulin and the 21 of Jason White make up row number nine. And then Noel Dowler back behind the wheel of the five in row 10. Mark Antoine Cameron in the 99. Adam Dowler's in the 53 and Brandon White's in the double zero. That is row number 11 and that is your field here today. And Dave, there's the E3 spark plugs race analysis. We're going 250 laps today, but more important, it's a brake race. We're gonna go to lap 125, bring them down pit road in order, let them do some work and send them right back out in the running order they came in. And it seems to be the future for the NASCAR touring division. Some like it, some don't. Imagine that, Billy, we've got some disagreements in racing. Well, the, the real truth is, in this case, you can bring less guys to the racetrack because you don't have to do a full-blown pit stop. It's meant to keep the cost down. 
Guys, a couple of things to keep in mind before we get underway. Of course, the track changes after the rain shower, completely green, different from what they practice on earlier. This will be a race of adjustments. The other points, everybody's focused on them, especially those championship contenders. Each of the teams has a chart just like this one to keep track of where they are in the points and where the competition is to see who comes out on top at the end. Guys, keep your eyes on Josh Collins here in the 87. He's the first Newfoundlander to ever race with the series. He's in his second career start, and this team is already very excited about the prospects of 2016. They're ramping up the program and getting ready for a full assault on the tour next year. You can bet everybody at Eastbound International Speedway on the Rock will be cheering on the 87 of Collins here this evening. And the field makes its way down the back straightaway for the final time under caution. All of the analysis ends right now as Scott Steckley will lead them through three and four. We will see the green flag. Pops letting him on the flag stand, preparing to wave the green flag for the Pinty's 250 here at Gortha Speedway. Off of four and we're underway. speed here in the Pinty's 250 and everybody minding their P's and Q's early, Billy. Wow, the Milverton Express out in front, but look at the two rookies behind him. A familiar spot for the Canadian Tire Dodge. Scott Steckley out front, we got trouble early. The 25 goes around now, the 0-2 of Gilly does as well. Skinnell involved, and Dowler brushes up against the wall as the caution flag flies. A couple of other cars. You see the Rookie of the Year candidate, the 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron had the stop to avoid. Mark Dilley gets the 0-2 straightened back out. Doesn't look like much damage to his car, but the 25 not so fortunate, as well as the 56. That's what started this whole thing. Have a look at the 25 of Joy McComb. Into the water goes Dilly. McComb goes around the water on the tires. Wow, looks like Mark Dilly dropped the left front into the water coming up off of turn four. That soaked the racetrack right there. Wow, and around goes the 25, collects the 18, and it's on from there. Now the crew taking a look at that right rear corner of the 18 car. They send Alex Tagliani down and away, but into the pits, the 25, the CBRT car. Well, Joey McComb in here in the number 25 machine, major front end damage. As you can see, all the ductwork's got problems. They've got the big piece of bear bond there. They're gonna have to do some major work to the front end here of this car. And just in front of him, two more pit stalls down. You've got the 56 of Matthew Scannell, who's also got front end damage on his car. Both crews having to go to work. Skinnell down and away, still working here on the McComb 25 machine at major holes. They've got the sledgehammers out, but they're going to send them out. McComb headed back to the speedway. Man, in a year that has been nothing but bad luck for Joey McComb, more bad luck in the season finale, but so far, Scott Steckley's in charge. Welcome back to Kawartha Speedway under a red flag condition. Now, guys, here's how technology has changed the strategy in pit stops over the last little while. Under a red flag, of course, you can't do any work on the car. But crew chief Tyler Case for the 18 has been sending his phone back and forth with crew members to take photos of what's going on with the right rear. He's able to see exactly what his crew is looking at. If they can diagnose the problem, be ready to make that repair as soon as the red flag is lifted. And we're now back under yellow. Todd, Dave, that's just one heads up crew chief right there. Use technology to your advantage. Now he knows exactly what he has to fix when they come back down pit road under caution. Now the fourth annual Pinty's wing eating contest was held earlier today here at Kawartha under the watchful eye of Tony Spiteri. It was the man they called Dave, not me, but Dave took home the big win. Well, there he is, the big winner. Those were some good looking wings, Dave. They sure were. Getting set for the first restart of the day. 
on lap 14, the red flag was brought out for the water cleanup in between turns three and four. It's complete, and we're getting set to go back to racing. Again, it's Scott Steckley out in front. He's got Gary Clute just to the outside. Sean Gibbs prepares to wave the green flag. It's that we're back underway. Up through the gearbox one more time down into turn one. Clute stuck on the outside. Not the fast way around right now, but as this day wears on, that outside groove will come in, Dave. Billy, the temperature is dropping. We should mention as the sun hides away now, the temperature is cooling off. The track temperature is cooling off as well. How is that going to change these cars? Well, you know, we, we had all the rubber washed off the racetrack with the rain, as we mentioned earlier. But as the track temperature goes down, the speeds pick up because the racetrack's not as slick. And them Goodyears will get a bunch more bite. On board the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. You saw the battle for third just in front. That's Caden Lapsovich on the inside and the number three of Jason Hathaway. And Hathaway looking pretty stout in that fast city race where number three. Well, the three car hungry for a win. The only thing he can do today to win a championship is to win a race and hope the 22 stumbles. But right now, the 22's in control. But how about the youngster in the Tim Hortons Dodge? Caden Lapsovich, he impressed when he made his first start at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. He made a, he impressed when he ran at Sunset Speedway, his home track, and he once again impresses here today in the Pinty's 250. Andrew Ranger moving up through the field, currently six. He's doing everything he can do for his championship fight as well. Look at who he is trailing right now. Andrew Ranger there tied in points coming into this one. High, wide, and handsome goes Andrew Ranger, and he almost loses it, but gets back down into the racing groove. He drove that big Mopar Dodge deep into turn three. Not enough traction out there yet, but I'm telling you, Dave, that outside groove will come in. Pretty dark in the, co in the cockpit of that Mopar Dodge, but the boy is getting it done for sure as he tries to reel the three back in. A couple of youngsters nose to tail now. The CTL Financial number 59 of Gary Clute, the 76 of Kate Lapsovich, and there's a Wiley veteran, the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Will DJ Kennington come here just for one purpose today, Dave? That was to win a race to cap off the 2015 season. There is the 0-2 of Mark Dilley battling with the double zero. Brandon White who slides up the hill. That's a dice for 14th position as you see the number 53 of Adam Dowler has gone a lap down. He's currently in 22nd position. Well, these rookies going at it, Dave. This is awesome to see. But again, Lapsovich, we've talked about it. He's in his wheelhouse here, Dave. This is a short track, a little bit of banking to it. He cut his teeth over there at Sunset Speedway. We're in his house. On board DJ Kennington in fourth spot with a front row seat looking at that battle. How about this one between the five of Noel Dowler and the 0-4 of J.F. Dumoulin for 12th spot? Oh, a little bumper contact there as they fight for spot. Look at that Mark Dilley on the outside. Oh, he got Whoa. pinched out. Did he ever? And look who was charging hard, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Did you see that rotor glowing in the left front? He is pushing it to try and get back up to the front. Tag, not a shy driver whatsoever, and he knows how to hustle a race car. He's certain, whoa, and Clute gets a little bit of help coming off of turn four. He was coming up on the back end of the lap car of Adam Dowler, and he almost went around, but he managed to save it here on the front straightaway. Believe it or not, we stay under green. Good car control from the young fella in the 59. Watch this again. He slides up a little bit. The 76 gets down into the spot. He has to lift for the 53. No harm, no foul. But look at the damage to the front of the 17 of DJ Kennington. The hood is buckled on that Castrol Edge Dodge. The Mahindra Tractors Challenger will have some issues moving forward. But does downforce, does aerodynamics really make a difference here? Dave, the aero package works at anything over 40 miles an hour. You got to keep that body and fenders clean and mean. Secondarily, as you can see there in the 47, a driver's view is out the left front of that window. DJ's buckle is right in front of his view, so that'll hinder him in traffic. He's okay by himself, but in traffic, his depth perception will be hindered. Kevin Lacroix using a little bump and run to get past the 95 of Anthony Simone into eighth position. Wayne Baker in the GD Coats used car superstore, the number nine hanging back there. He's having a great run here today. Probably his best so far in the NASCAR Canadian Whoa, Tire Series. Oh, he got series. one around backwards on the front stretch. 
And it is the five of Noel Dowler. He was just about to go lap down. He does, in fact, now go lap down as the leaders go by by the Empire Mechanical. Number five headed the wrong way here on the front shoot. Well, he'll find a hole in traffic, get that baby turned around, and let's have a look at the replay, Dave, see what really happens. Here he's coming off a of four right there, and looks like he might have had a little bit of help. A little help from the 18, Dave, and around he goes. 17 makes his way along pit road, and yes, you can see the damage to that hood buckled out on track. A nice charge for DJ Kennington up from eighth towards third. Now they want to secure that hood. If they got to make a couple of stops during this caution to do it, they will, but that driver's got to see out the front windshield. Yeah, you're right, Billy. You can really see from that onboard camera how much that hood buckle will affect his vision, and look at what's coming off the 25 of Joy McComb. Pretty much everything on the front end of that Ford Fusion. But Scott Steckley remains in control in the 22. He's out front. Welcome back to the Pinty's 250, the finale race of the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series Championship here on TSN. Scott Steckley has led since the drop of the green. Keaton Lapsovich back up on the outside as we get set for restart number two here on lap 46. The field bunching up tightly as it moves onto the front stretch, enters into that restart box, and now the green flag waves were back underway. That all-important spotter telling his driver he's clear. These guys with the containment seats can't see out of these race cars just the best on the side peripheral, so they rely heavily on the spotter. Stackley once again establishes himself out in front, but look who has snuck up in the second now. The three of Jason Hathaway goes to the inside. Huge point ramifications here as Jason Hathaway sticks it down low. He'll lead a lap and pick up a bonus point. Big news for the driver of the three as Steckley up on the outside will settle back in second. The 76 of Lafayette trying to get through the door that's, that the three car opened, and he's in tough right there. Steckley hanging tough on the outside. A young guy like Keaton Lapsovich has absolutely nothing to lose here. He's not running for Rookie of the Year. He is just running for race wins. And look, he is moving to the inside of the 22 of Steckley for second spot. And he clears him, but Dave, more important, the 76, Lapsovich really looking to impress people, bring more money to the party for 2016. And look who joins this party, the 27 of Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge. Now, all three in the top, the point standings are on the top four positions on the racetrack. DJ Kennington working his way back through traffic on the high side. Dave, the high side starting to come in. Moving around the 21 of Jason White as we ride on board the Powder Ventures Dodge. That is a battle for 15th spot with the 17 of Kennington. Got to be careful on the outside right now, Dave. When you're running back in the pack, stuff happens in a hurry. The Steelcraft Chevy, the 14 of James Van Domselaar on the inside as Noel Dowler finds a little bit of bite. Billy, it looks like the outside starting to come in as we ride on board the 87 of Josh Collins in 17th spot. Yeah, I've been watching it come, and as I said, as the rubber got laid down and the sun went down and the temperature went down, business would pick up. Kennington still working the outside. Watch the drive he gets off the top side. Watch this. He'll pick up half, three quarters of a car length as he heads for turn three. And Van Domselaar will throw it back down low. Very hard, but once again, Kennington able to roll it right through the center of that corner. Picks up another car length down the front stretch. The big dodge handling just fine down the straightaway. Hear that horsepower from the 14 of James Van Domselaar. A little contact here between the 59 of Gary Clute and the 95 of Anthony Simone. That's a battle for a sixth spot. And Simone has been very, very good here today, and he's been pretty good on the oval so far this season. Gary Clute drove her in super hard that time. See the, the front rotors turn full orange as he tried to get her anchored up, not to run in the back of the 95. 
Riding on board the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, a little bit out of shape under braking. Known for his uh, expertise on the road courses, but showing very well here at Gortha. Good car control. That car is severely loose on corner entry. And I'll tell you, that'll make you busy in a hurry. Jason Hathaway, anything but a walk in the park as he's got some company on his back bumper and we'll take a look at the top three runners and where they are in the field. Hathaway leads this one. Scott Steckley currently running in third, but the leader is not very far ahead. Scott Steckley looks very comfortable in there. And there's Andrew Ranger. He's in his office as well, working the wheel very gently, not looking too awful bad right now. No, but he's not able to keep the pace as the top three. You can see the gap in front. He's currently sitting in fourth spot, so a very respectable position. But Jason Hathaway is starting to put a little bit of a gap along with Caden Lapsovich on the rest of the field. But Dave, remember this, it's a break race. We got a race to lap 125. Give our crew chief some really good feedback on what the car has done in the first 125 so we can set it up for the money run. Alex Tagliani making a little bit of room for himself there, getting underneath the 0-4, the Belmar Dodge of J.F. Dumoulin and the 99 of Cameron will follow him through. There's Dowler trying to get back up in there as well. So this is deep in traffic and it is very much like rush hour. I love that onboard shot. Shows DJ driving it in on the outside. Dave, the cool thing about the outside is you can follow a guy down the straightaway. When he rolls down into the apex, you roll up beside him. He can't leave until you leave because he can't get to that preferred groove up to the fence coming off the corner. Pretty smart if your car will work there. And riding on board the 14 of James Van Domsel are currently sitting in 15th position. Here's a good battle up towards the front of the field. Battle for eight spot between the nine of Dwayne Baker and the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Baker took a look there, but couldn't make it stick. But Dave, you know, Baker's been struggling a little bit because these aren't the cars he's used to driving, but we know he's got a good car and we know he can wheel one, and today he's wheeling. And speaking of wheeling, here comes the 22-year points leader. Coming into this one, Scott Steckley back up into second position. Steckley not using the car up. I, I've been watching. The three's got the rotors glowing. The 22, nice, see the little rotor, full red on the three car. The 22 car, no shadows. Yeah, but the 22 has to play catch up. Jason Hathaway currently holds the lead here at Kawartha. Welcome back to your home for NASCAR racing in Canada, TSN, and leader Jason Hathaway is carving his way through traffic here at Kawartha Speedway. We're working lap 98, a pretty brisk pace so far. Well, certainly, as a race car driver, you don't want to hold anything back. When you get in a good rhythm and you got a good car like Jason's got, you just drive it to the end. Just to give you an idea of where some of these cars are running, the 14 there, James Van Domselaar, as we ride on board with the Steelcraft Door Products Chevrolet. He's currently in 17th spot. The 87, you saw a quick flash of Josh Collins running in 18th. Pretty good run so far for the out-of-towners, not from Ontario. And how about Jason White in 16th spot? He's also having a decent day. Well, the 14 crew come all the way from Fort Saskatchewan. They do a nice job when they race with us. They always are clean competitors, and they have a lot of fun. And they can watch the two leaders go at it and find their lines on the racetrack as Hathaway has about a five-car length lead now over the 22 of Scott Steckley. And this a battle for fifth spot as Anthony Simone takes a look underneath the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Ranger has been sliding back. Andrew Ranger, that car just does not look as comfortable as it was earlier, Dave. He's hunting for traction. You see him running that outside groove, trying to keep that big Dodge wound up. Yeah, he moved up to the outside groove about 20 laps ago, and it worked well for a little while, but now he seems to be falling back, just hunting for traffic. Whoa, the 74 gives Anthony Simone a little bumper up off the corner, but we got four cars under a blanket, all trying to get to the top five. And you can see the 74 of Kevin Lacroix hanging onto the steering wheel. 
Of that, Dodge, we have about 22 laps until the midway break, so Lacroix, no doubt, hanging on to this one in hopes of getting some good new Goodyear Eagles. And Baker right there in the nine looking really competitive tonight. And a lap traffic, J.F. Dumoulin putting the squeeze on the three of Jason Hathaway, your race leader. Now Dumoulin tucks to the inside. Dumoulin currently in 15th position. And Steckley's gonna follow the three through. Steckley able to close right up on the back of the three of Jason Hathaway. Not sure who's playing the game here right now. Hathaway is driving that thing in hard and Steckley's just riding his bumper. Steckley is hunting an unfamiliar position for the driver of the 22 out of Milverton, Ontario. He's used to being at the front of the field Whoa, here in 2015. Problem. The 95. On the front stretch, problems for the 14 of James Van Domselaar. He gets it stopped before hitting the wall, but caution flag flies once again. Take another look. He was pretty much in the thick of things here on the front shoot. And it might have had a little bit of help from the innovative plumbing number 95. The 95 certainly helped the 14 come up off the corner, and now he's gone the wrong direction. Right there, you can see his hands. He got rooted, and around he goes. Good job at locking it down, though, and avoiding the wall for Van Domselaars. We're under caution, and this brings us to the halfway break. And the Tim Hortons halfway update. We've had two leaders so far today, just one lead change, three cautions for a total of 26 laps. A pretty clean race so far here today. The top rookie has been the 76 of Caden Lapsovich sitting in third spot. Well, they'll bring all the cars down to pit road and they all must be in their pit box before they're allowed to start work. There's a good look at the young line. Caden Lapsovich, you can see the crews ready and waiting to go to work. And while they prepare to go to work, our crew on pit lane is about to do the same. NASCAR has released the teams out onto pit lane, and now the work begins. Fuel going in the three of Jason Hathaway. As you heard, just minor adjustments to that car. He's been a little bit loose off. The 22, the points leader, Scott Steckley. A little handling adjustment there as well. The 22 car reported to be a little bit tight. Danny DeShepard is going to put a spring rubber into the right rear. They'll get fuel and four fresh good years, and then they'll be set to go the distance to conclude the 2015 season. Well, the Tim Hortons crew here for young Caden Lapsovich go to work on his Dodge number 76. A full round of tires, new tank of gas, and speaking to crew chief Don Thompson Jr., they are planning on loosening the car up a bit. Caden's saying it is a little bit tight out there. They're going to take a round out and loosen this car up a little bit. You can see some of the other crews thrashing around the 27 of Andrew Ranger and the Mopar Dodge, some right side tires. As they go to work as well, Ranger looking for a little bit of magic in that Dodge Charger. When we return, we'll be back to green here in the Pinty's 250. Welcome back to the Pinty's 250. We just had a round of pit stops, and as we line up for the restart, here's Todd with a little bit more information. Todd? Guys, a couple of quick updates before we go green. Some extra work on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. They bent the toe, wanted to straighten it out. He'll go to the back of the field. The two front runners, a couple of things to keep note of. The 22 of Scott Steckley, a little bit tight. Spring rubber went in. The crew chief, Randy Steckley, said he's a little anxious, and he just kind of wants this whole event over with. Also, on the left front of the three car of Jason Hathaway, bleeding the brakes during that break period for service. Now, they got to make sure that they're tight and ready to go for the end. But guys, the cool thing about that, in a pit stop race, they wouldn't have been able to get that job done in the time frame given. We've seen the blower on the left front. They got her cooled off, got her bled down. He should be good to go. And now all these drivers have what they have for the stretch run here with the Pinty's 250, and it's Hathaway back out in front as we're back under green. The 22 of Scott Steckley continues to trail behind. The 47 of LP Dumoulin now up inside the top five. There he is, just behind Caden Lapsovich. Caden Lapsovich stuck the nose of the 76 down the bottom and he got position on the 22 but he can't get the deal done. Boy, Lapsovich is super hungry on these restarts but have a look at this. Business way in the back of the field. 
but it is very tight. There is the 17 of Kennington, the 18 of Tagliani, and Rookie of the Year leader, the 59 of Gary Clute, right beside the man who's chasing him, the Graphoid, number 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Well, we got battles all over the racetrack. I mean, DJ Kennington's been in and out of the pit. The 59 got spun around, and now they're all fighting their way back into the top 10. There's Baker with the yellow rookie stripe just ahead of these two as well. Now, each one of these positions counts for a point in the rookie battle. As long as you're passing a rookie, you get a point ahead of what they get. So that's all what tallies up in the end of the night. There we are right there. The 59 gets position. That's for eight spot and a point in the rookie battle. And DJ Kennington comes through as well. Kennington, the man in the middle there, he'll sneak up through. Here comes Tagliani as well. Looks like Cameron going to be shuffled back up on the outside. Mark Dilley in that 0-2 car, he's looking pretty racy as well as he follows the 18 through on the bottom. Here's the 17 and the 59. Kennington to the inside of Gary Clut. You remember these two do have a history. They battled in Saskatoon. And that one didn't really end so well. This one a cleaner dice as the 59 will slot in behind. Alex Tagliani, the 18, he slides down the bottom. He's going to take the spot away from Clute as well. And here comes the 99, fighting back. The rookie battle continues, Dave. Up on the outside is Gary Clute. That high groove, not quite as sticky as it once was earlier on in this race. Billy, what's the reason for that fall? Well, we're on sticker tires too, Dave, and, and things have changed a little bit. It will be there. You just got to get the car angled right to use it up. You get a much better run up off the top. You keep that motor wound up, and that baby will hunt down the straightaway. up to the front of the field on board the number three fast Eddie race where Chevrolet of Jason Hathaway looking back to the Canadian tire dodge of Scott Steckley and the Tim Hortons dodge of 15 year old Kate Lapsovich. Watch the front end of that Tim Hortons dodge on corner entry. He slams that baby down into the corner and just goes right around the bottom of the hook. Now here's a fight for six right here. Dwayne Baker on the bottom, the 95. Anthony Simone going right at it down into turn one. Baker down low the innovative plumbing. Number 95 of Simone will slide back on the outside. Once again, DJ Kennington gonna follow through the hole that's opened up in front of him. Baker having a really good outing here tonight. One man's not having a good outing is in the infield along with Todd. As a matter of fact, he just can't catch a break this season. Todd? Guys, they're having a look at that 56 car. Matthew Scannell thought they had lost the clutch when they went back to green after the break. Howie Scannell, his dad, is under the hood, or, well, under the engine compartment. The hood's not there anymore. But having a look to see if that is actually the problem. Well, you can see, Dave, that he's got a, a wrench in his hand and he's working on that four-barrel carburetor. Something not right on the 56. That's really a shame because Matthew Scannell has had a number of great runs so far this season. Unfortunately, the results just haven't been there, but he'll be back strong next year. Another year under his belt and he'll be good. Well, Dave, there's the guy that's having the strong season right there. Scott Steckley focused on the task at hand tonight. And the infield is getting busy. Clinton? Well, we're here with Jason White. Jason, certainly not the way you needed your night to end. We heard possible clutch issues. What's wrong with the 21 car? Uh, we had a clutch issue on the restart there. It was slipping, but uh, I think the transmission let go because of it, so it's just a shame. We were <laughs> happened twice now this year. We were, we were getting ready to get the lucky dog there and really carry on, but uh, thanks to my guys. Thanks a lot to Canadian Tire for uh, supporting the series for the last 10 years. Really appreciate that, and uh, Maybe we'll come out next year and see what we can do. Well, you come all the way from Sun Peaks, BC. A long night. Got a little bit longer here for Jason White. And Jason touched on something very important there. Canadian Tire and their big push to make NASCAR a success here in Canada. They jumped on board nine years ago with this series. And man, have they done great things. Well, it's been so good for the sport. All the store owners have climbed on board. <laughs> They've had a three-time champion, maybe four at the end of the night. Canadian Tire should be very, very proud of what they've done for Canadian racing. And they bring excitement like this to the track every time. A battle for fifth. Dwayne Baker underneath the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Was a little bump that got him there. Lacroix crossing over. He gets to the inside. They make contact. DJ Kennington in there. Lacroix got a jump off the front wheel. 
All kinds of contact, Dave, down the front stretch. They got in, into each other a couple times, and now Caution is out. Caution's out. You see the car slowing, but these two drivers taking a good hard look at each other as we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix. There goes Baker. The crossover. Wow, no. pretty aggressive <laughs> racing tonight here at Core the Speedway. But this is the last race of the year. Oh, and a little bit of payback. Dwayne Baker gets in the back of the 74. No, this is not going to go over well for the driver of the Uniselect. Number 74, Kevin Lacroix. You can see he almost went back at Baker, but he cooled off just a little bit. You see the other drivers getting out of the way. We continue under caution. Big damage to the GD Coats used car superstore, the number nine of Baker, and then around goes Baker here on the front shoe. Wow, not so good. Dwayne, it just come to me, Dwayne Baker has also been known as the bully, but tonight he's getting it back in spades. Uh, you see damage now to the front end of the 74. These two cars look like they've been through more of a demolition derby than the Pinty's 250. There is Ray McCaughey trying to argue the both drivers have been issued a one lap penalty from NASCAR and the crews are not pleased. But have another look at what finished this one off. Oh, Kevin Lacroix turns right, right into Dwayne. That's, it's really too bad, Dave, because we were talking about the nine car was having an exceptional night here at Kawartha Speedway. And you know what, the 74 was too. He was up inside the top five, but they're out and the three car of Jason Hathaway continues to lead. One lap to go before we get back to green near Kawartha and Clinton's in the thick of it as the 74 is parked it for the night. Here with Kevin Lacroix. Kevin, wild night out there. What's your side of things? You know, he got a bit uh, excited behind me and, uh, you know, on the race it's uh, something, but on yellow flags uh, getting bumped by behind, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. And, you know, I'm not in points anyway, so I showed uh, that I have some speed and I will... I wanted to show also that I got some balls too, so I, if you want to mess around, I can mess around also. So he did the stupid thing, I did a stupid thing, I know I can, I blame myself, but it's a shame for the team, uh, we had a good car, but you know, it's, uh, we, we're still learning, uh, it was just a lesson for next year. We have from Kevin Lacroix, his take on what happened out there on the speedway. Back to green, a restart on lap 169, now the nine. Bob Dwayne Baker is still out there. He's two laps down, sitting in 20th position. It looks like they were going to park it, but they managed to make the repairs necessary. Well, the pit crews go to work to keep their driver out on the racetrack for all the experience they can get. And Lacroix said some important things. He learned, but he also has to show that he will not take any roughhouse and you give it back. That's how you earn respect in this sport. Well, Hathaway back out in front. He's earned a lot of respect over the years, driving in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Steckley running second. And there is Caden Lapsovich once again taking a look underneath the 22. Once again, that 76 able to pinch it down as we look a little bit deeper in the field. The 0-2 of Mark Dilley in the Johnsonville. Ford Fusion to the inside of the innovative dodge of Anthony Simone. Big drive up off the corner, the 0-2 gets the spot. Dilly's had a good car all afternoon. He just can't get up in the top five to show what he's really got. And how about the 17 of DJ Kennington? The Castro Ledge Dodge had fallen back. We've got problems again in turn number two. Caution for the fifth time of the night. The 56 of Matthew Skinnell collides with the 53 of Adam Dowler. Scannell just can't cut, catch a break. We've talked about it. There's Dwayne Baker back down pit road in the nine. Yeah, it looks like he's going to park it for the night. The Empire Mechanical number 53 gets moving, and there goes the Omvik Dodge of Matthew Scannell. So both drivers able to drive away. A look at a tense Canadian tire crew, and there is the Fast Eddie Racewear team looking on as their driver continues out in front here in the Pinty's 250.
It's been all Jason Hathaway since lap 48, but Scott Steckley is locked right in as he's doing what he needs to do here in the Pinty's 250 on TSN. Well, Dave, we've been watching him all night so far. He just seems to be mirroring whatever the three car does. He just stays in contention because remember, the three car can win the race and all Steckley needs to do is finish the top four and fourth championship is all his. Back to green and once again, it's the three of Hathaway out in front, but these drivers will have a little added competition next season. It was announced earlier that Alex LeBay is going to run a full-time program with Dave Jacobs Racing, Can-Am, the sponsor there, and they will be campaigning for us. Dave, it's a great sponsorship to bring in here, but remember this, Andrew Ranger drove for that team and won two championships, so I'm looking for big things out of that camp next year. And also we should mention that the Dumoulin brothers are going to break away from King Autosport and go out on their own. Dumoulin Competition will be centered out of Trois-Rivières, Quebec. That'll be interesting to watch next year. A good battle right here, too, when you're talking about J.F. Dumoulin. He's got the 18 of Alex Tagliani all over the back bumper. And you can see the 0-2 of Mark Dilley in there. Sitting in eighth position as Andrew Ranger jumps up to the outside. Contact, though, between Tagliani and Dumoulin. And here comes Andrew Ranger fighting on the bottom. He's the only one of the points leaders that is not in the top five right now, and he's fighting hard to get back in there, Dave. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the driver, the Mopar Dodge, sitting all the way back in 10th position, mired in very, very heavy traffic. On board with Joe McComb, driving what looks like a modified after that lap one incident, but he's marching to the front. And now we see the shot from the onboard of the 87 of Josh Collins from Newfoundland to just outside of Peterborough, and Collins sitting in 14th position. James Van Domsler started 15th and running 15th. He's been around backwards once, Dave, but he's marching on. Now Dilly to the inside of the number 27 of Andrew Ranger, and once again, Ranger jumps to the outside. He finds that momentum, gets a good shot. That big dodge, once you get it wound up on the outside, she sure handles good down the straightaway. Fifth spot up for grabs here between the WeatherTech Dotsie number 47 of LP Dumoulin and the Braille Graphoid number 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Oh, Cameron drove it indeed. He overcooked it there for sure. And look at this. Business is picking up. DJ Kennington all over the back bumper of that Tim Horton Dodge. Side by side down the front stretch. Who will get the spot in turn one? It's DJ Kennington. Not supposed to turn right when you're on an oval, but Kate Lapsovich did a lot of that off of turn number four. Hung on to it. That car was nearly spun out as D.J. Kennington made a little bit of contact. Well, it, you know, the lap times of the second and third place car were slowing down, Dave, and that gap from the 22 was getting bigger. D.J. had to move him so he can go after those top two guys. You know what, Billy? You talked about exactly what the 22 had to do today, and that's just keep the three in his sights. Well, Jason Hathaway is doing what he needs to do. He is leading laps. He's out in front. He needs to win this race to have any shot at winning a championship. Make no mistake about that. Jason Hathaway and that Team 3 Red, they know their job for today. Unfortunately, the 22 knows his, and he's right there to keep them in sight. And Hathaway has now officially picked up that second bonus point for leading the most laps. And off the pace now, the innovative plumbing number 95 of Anthony Simone. Off of turn four, is he gonna be able to get it back to pit lane? He's limping around. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Sean Gibbs with a yellow flag in hand. Caution once again here in the Pinty's 250. The 95 missed the opening to pit road down the backstretch and will come to a rolling stop down in turn one. Yeah, he was having a decent run. He was sitting in 13th position was Anthony Simone, and it looks like he may need to push back. He's going to try and get that car refired and get back to pit lane. But it's a good opportunity to check in with our E3 in-race reporter. Jason, it's Billy Rose Jr. in the tower. You got a copy? Yeah, man. Go ahead, Billy. Jason, you've been leading a lot of laps here tonight. That last pit stop, did you guys bleed the brakes? What's going on, man? Yeah, it's had some brake issue there late in the first run. I don't know, I've never had brake issue with this car, but uh, yeah, let's fix that up and uh, we're good to go. Made a few good adjustments here, let's more laps, so we'll uh, see if we can close this thing out here. We well, have things under control, Jason. 37 laps to go. How you feeling? Well, if I can hold on to 22, I don't know who's coming behind him, but uh, you know, he's. Uh, he might be playing cat and mouse, maybe just sitting back knowing where I am. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. It'll be a good shootout. My boys uh, grabbed 
Great job, sir. Great job on the brakes. And uh, give me a good piece to work with. So jump to me to please them. 10-4, man. Good luck. Okay, Bob. Thanks. And Jason is right. It is going to be an awesome shootout here at Kawartha Speedway, just outside of Peterborough, Ontario. The top two in points are the top two on the speedway as we get down to the final laps. Welcome back to the 11th and final race of the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series presented by Mobile One, the Fall Classic here at Kawartha Speedway. One to go before we get back to green. All important spotter and driver communication. What they're talking about is will DJ Kennington give them some racing room because of the championship? And I'm sure DJ being a veteran, it won't be a problem. That's the voice of Billy Rose Jr. I'm Dave Bradley. Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey are patrolling the pits for us here in the final race. Championship night for the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. The points leader starting in second spot. Jason Hathaway coming into this one, second in points. He'll lead them back to green off of turn number four. Slowly, the field bunches. Now they jump on the loud pedal. We're back underway. Inside, side by side, down into turn one. One more time. DJ Kankin able to slot it into third. Lapsovich gets crooked up off the corner. Here comes Dumoulin. Clear all around is what everybody in the top three wanted to hear. And now it's Kate Lapsovich who had such a strong run shoved up in that outside groove on board, TJ Kennington. That's the voice of Kennington too, longtime spawner for the number 22 of Scott Steckley. 217 laps in the books of a schedule of 250, now 218 as they cross the stripe. Business is picking up up front. The three car stretching his legs, trying to put some distance between him and the 22. But right now, the 22 is just riding it out. Should mention the third man in the points battle coming into this race, the Wolfhard Dodge of Andrew Ranger, not having the outing he needed here today. Oh, that car on the long run just not been very happy. The car just does not want to find any grip up off the corner. Sitting in 10th spot where he has been for most of this second leg of the Pinty's 250. Now we ride on board with the driver of the 27. The big Mopar Dodge just not being very cooperative tonight, Dave. And you can see the looks on the faces of the crew, just long looks, no big smiles there as Andrew Ranger will have to try and muscle that car a little bit further forward, but will he have anything to catch the three of Hathaway or the 22 of Scott Steckley? They have been the class of the field so far. Young Lapsovich fading as well. He's been up front all night long. Now he's back in heavy traffic. Yeah, he's chasing the Rookie of the Year combatant, the number 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron, who is chasing the Justin's Rookie of the Year crown. And he's doing himself a lot of favors by putting a lot of rookies between him and the 59 of Gary Clute. Remember, he came into this one five points back of Gary Clute for that rookie championship. And there's Joey McComb. Give a hats off to him. Involved in that wreck early on. They cut the front end off it, and he's working his way into the top 10. Once again, we got to take our hats off to all the NASCAR staff, Alex Nagy, Sean Gibbs, Jeff Wilcox, and all the rest of them. They do a wonderful job each and every outing for the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Week in and week out, they work very hard in very hot temperatures to make sure the competition field is perfectly flat. And they keep these drivers safe at all times, too. They certainly do. Good couple shots from on board. The Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger, and now we'll ride along with your race leader, Jason Hathaway. There's his wife looking on, team manager. Just watching that scoreboard, telling him his time. Spilly, does it, as a driver, do you need to know that this late in the race? You know what, it's, 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 he knows when he's hitting good marks. Jason is a, certainly a, a grizzly veteran that knows how to get the job done. Look how comfortable Steckley is. He's just sitting there listening to his boss. Right near you, 
no pressure from behind from anyone. His crew chief, Randy Steckley, giving him not lap times, but distance. No pressure behind, no pressure, and he can see the three car, so he knows that's his fight, but he's got nobody up his bumper give him any heat. Help you take a breath and relax with nine laps to go in this one, and it is come down to a two dog fight at the front of this one. The three of Jason Hathaway has about a three car length lead over the 22 of Scott Steckley. And finally, we see some glowing in the front rotors of the 22. Steckley may be turning the wick up to try and catch the three. And there is third place, the Castrol Dodge of DJ Kennington, not too far behind. The WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Dumoulin has really turned things around this race. And there's our other rookie combatant right there, the 59, Gary Kalu. He's in hot pursuit. The 87, I mean, is in hot pursuit of him. Collins having a great night. Yeah, and this is big. It's the battle for 11th spot, but Gary Clute needs to stay ahead of Josh Collins to be crowned the Justin's Rookie of the Year. Yeah, because Collins, he's a rookie as well, so there's heavy points. Stackley right on the rear bumper of that Jason Hathaway automobile. Into lap traffic as Van Donselaar dives to the inside, lets the leaders go by. We see the shot out the front windshield of the 14 car to this, the lead battle between the three of Hathaway and Stackley. Five laps to go. You can see the, that's not a wave from Sean Gibbs. That is telling the drivers how many laps left on the board. Scott Steckley is going to use all five of those laps trying to get the lead back from the three car. But you know what? Randy's on the radio telling him, you don't need it, bud. Just sit right there. Let him win the fight because he's not going to win the war. Mark Dilly no, just ahead. No, and Dilly, there he is, staying high, letting the leaders go through down low. Dilly, a veteran of the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. He's been to this rodeo before. He knows what to do on a championship night, and that's not get involved. Hathaway makes it through. Steckley now makes it cleanly through as well. But it's up to one of these two to make a mistake in the dying laps here of the Pinty 250. They are well within striking distance of each other. Down into turn three one more time. You can see the flames coming out the exhaust of that turn three. Listen to the motor screaming. Two laps to go that time by for the three of Jason Hathaway. All Steckley can do is take a look at that big chalk motorsports emblem on the rear bumper of the three car. I don't think he's got anything for Jason Hathaway. And if he doesn't, it doesn't really matter as we see the white flag. One more lap to go. Steckley needs to stay where he is. He can't afford to make a mistake. It'll cost him the championship if he does. Hathaway needs to stay out in front, down the back straightaway, in through three and four for the final time. And now, Skinnell just out in the head, but Hathaway's going to win it, and Steckley is going to win the championship. Day two big winners here tonight. Hathaway's going to win the race, and Steckley's going to win his fourth national championship. Jennington will round out the top three. You take a look at the rest of the finishing order at the line, but two celebrations on pit lane, and let's head down there. Clinton? We're here with Craig Masters. Craig, what a couple of races for you and your team. Your driver and team did everything you needed to do to win the championship. Still came up a bit short. Can you guys be satisfied? Yeah, we're pretty satisfied. We worked hard on this car. We, we kind of lost it mid-season there, and we got it back. So uh, just like to thank everyone that uh, come on board for this weekend. Um, a lot of guys supported us. Like like to thank Ed Hackins and Jamie Hackins and the whole race team and just all the fans. It's been a really, really good race, and... Uh, We'll, we'll take it. It's not a championship. Congratulations to Scott and his team. Done really well. Congratulations to Jason Hathaway's team here. Picks up the win at Kawartha. Congratulations. Celebrations continue. Randy Steckley, four championships. How good does that sound? It, it sounds real good, but I, it's supposed to get easier the more you get, but I think it's getting more difficult every year. I can't thank enough the crew guys here. They do an awesome job every week. And uh, Scott does an amazing job on the track. It's, it's, it's a great feeling to win another one of these. It's great. We'll see your driver. Thank you very much. A little victory tire rub and a thumbs up. That is the competition in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. The two champions on the night congratulating each other. When we return, we'll take you to victory lane.
Welcome back to Kawartha Speedway and the Pinty's 250 here on TSN. And Billy, Jason Hathaway had to come in here. He had to lead the most laps. He had to win the race. He did both of those things, but this race was classic Scott Steckley. Scott Steckley drove a masterful race. I'm telling you, I watched. Hathaway was driving the wheels off that three car. Had the front rotors all lit up. Steckley sitting back there, just calm, cool, and collected. Not one glow out of the rotors. The odd time you'd, you'd see him, he'd run on in there, have a little look around, make sure the guys knew he was there, but a masterful drive. He did what he needed to do today to win this championship. And the winner has pulled into victory lane. Let's head down there with Todd standing by. Second race in a row, third time this year. Jason Hathaway out of the car to celebrate and get congratulations, and he's going to get handed son Hudson to be up on the car to celebrate with him, guys. Trying to get him to hold up that number one finger. And we'll let you... <laughs> We'll let you settle down and with Hudson. Congratulations on a great run. You did everything that you could to not only win the race and win a championship, but a worthy celebrate, worthwhile celebrating with the family today. Yeah, for sure. We did everything we had to do. And uh, honestly, I didn't think we were going to come in here and lead the most laps, but we got that taken care of and qualified up front. So that gave us a real good chance to get up front. And uh, it was good. I didn't know if Scott was just kind of hanging behind me, knew where I was, I knew where he was. And if he finished second to me, that's cool. He wins the championship. So. Our plan in here was to come in here and win the race, and whatever happens, the points happens. And uh, to lose a championship to Scott, a three-time champion in a class act with his guys is, uh, you know, I'm not disappointed at all. So I just want to come in here and get a win. That's three wins for our team. The Chaco, Fast Eddie, HGC, DSC, LC Construction. A lot of people come on board this weekend to get us here. We got a fresh bullet in the car this weekend, so we had a lot of people jump on board and help us pay for that. So we... Uh, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Jimmy Williamson and the crew from Uxbridge is here. This family got a bunch of shirts made up, so that's pretty cool to see them here, local guys. So, pretty cool. I gotta thank Ed Hackinson. He never, well, never once said, don't bring the race car to the track. I knew we didn't have any money, but it was cool as hell. Great job by Jason Hathaway. Congratulations on win number three, the season finale. Well, DJ, not a bad day for you. Podium finish, got an early wreck, but you were coming all day. This crew worked pretty hard. Pretty good way to finish your season. Yeah, really good. With Castro Edge, Mahindra Tractors Dodge was awesome today. Uh, just a shame we got into Caden at the start there, and it, it tore it up pretty good, so it, it hurt us big time arrow-wise, but uh, we had definitely something for the win today. Uh, makes us pretty proud. It's a good way to end the season. Brian Cathcart, Mopar, um, you know, Canadian Linen, everybody that helps us out. We just appreciate all the support, and uh, we'll be back to go get them next year. Still smiling as usual. DJ Kennington with the top three finish here at Core. <laughs> And great to see the Castrol team and DJ Kennington having a great run here. Great way to cap off a 2015 season that wasn't their best, but it'll give them a boost heading into 2016. As we take a look at the top 20 finishers here in the Pinty's 250, you know what? Some surprises here, but some good stories as well. Well, the young guns showed up today. Caden Lapsovich ran up front the whole race, did a great job. The family thing, the Dowler brothers all the way from Western Canada made their dad proud today. Absolutely. And if you look at the 25 of Joey McComb, trouble early on in this race, but rebounded very well. Well, hey, he was our first caution, tore that thing up, looked like a NASCAR modified, but he proved good pit work, a little bit of structure on pit road, got the thing back out, and it ran strong. And there is our winner celebrating in victory circle as he gets the trophy from Tony Spiteri from Pinty's. And now, can you hear the 22? It's his turn to celebrate as Scott Steckley does the burnout. Scott Steckley heating the hides, doing them victory donuts, and, and you know what? Big donuts four championships in this NASCAR Touring Series. Boy, if he ever wants to give up this NASCAR thing, he may have a future in drifting with these donuts. He's doing a pretty good job. Well, he's gonna come over and get awful close to the crowd. He wants to give everybody part of this smoke show. And a smoke show it is. You see, the fans have lined the fences. They don't want to miss a second of this celebration. The 22 disappears into the smoke. Now the celebration really begins when this young fella climbs out of that 22 race car. He's done this now four times, celebrating a championship in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Here's how it finished up. Pretty close at the top, Bill. Well, Jason Hathaway, only four markers back. Ranger drifted back a little bit. He had a bad outing, but LP Dumoulin 
has a great day and comes home in the top five. Yeah, and you can see Mark Antoine Cameron, J.F. Dumoulin. How about that top 10 points finish for him in his first season? Now the 2015 champ climbs out. Scott Steckley up on top of that 22 machine for the fourth time as the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series champion. Scott Steckley with a big smile on his face, and yeah, absolutely. Wife Penny and the kids are coming in for congratulations. I didn't get a kiss. He's going, Dexter. Who didn't get a kiss? Scott, those burnouts, those are definitely the burnouts of a four-time champion. You have plenty of practice. How satisfying was this victory? Oh, it's very satisfying. People don't realize how much work goes into uh, these race teams. Uh, I, I have a great crew. Uh, Tyler and Greg at the top do an amazing job, but just the fans that come out, uh, all the support I have from all my family and my wife and kids, and sponsors, Canadian Tire, Mobile One, Maximum, uh, A.W. Millwright, Sturdy Forum, Herb Transport, they've all been with me for so many years. Um, it's just amazing to be able to win four championships. Uh, I can't say enough about my crew. They work day in, day out. Um, it's, it's just, it's amazing. Nobody's won four championships in this series ever before, and uh, to be the first one to do it, it's just, it's great. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's a very proud Scott Steckley of that 22 racing team, four-time series champion. Great. Yeah. <laughs> So Scott Steckley caps off another great season in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. But as we mentioned off the top of the program, we were watching a race within a race, and that was for the Jostens Rookie of the Year battle. And this one did come down to the wire, didn't it, Bill? Absolutely. The 59 car did what he needed to do. He stayed out of trouble. He, he ran good in practice and ran good throughout the race. But really, the capper was when he stole that race at Mossport. That set the tone for the season. Mark Antoine Cameron almost had him here with a solid top 10 run in that number 99 but just came up a little bit short still let's head down trackside where clinton is standing by with this year's rookie of the year well there he is ladies and gentlemen your jostens 2015 rookie of the year as he pull off the yellow stripe gary what a run for you, you start off the season just amazing you got to be pretty pleased with how it ended for you yeah i mean I, I i can't thank the team enough a bunch of guys volunteering legendary ctl secure core pastime i had uh you know, I had Titan Productions, Harmony, and I had uh, uh, Thermal Technology Services, and I had a bunch of guys, and I had, um, I had TrailCon on for one, a couple races out west, and, you know, it's awesome. Been a roller coaster. We had to, we had to grind it out today to get those positions, and uh, we couldn't be happier. Congrats. There he is. Your Woo! Rookie of the Year, yeah. Gary Clute. It's great to see so many young faces working their way up here in this series. And Billy, just as quick as you can blink, another year behind us in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Believe it or not, next year will be the 10th anniversary. Well, and you know what? The sport's in great shape. We got a lot of young guys announced they're coming back full time. I think the sport's in pretty good hands. It sure is. And if we get races like we saw here today, we will be in great shape. There is Bob Duvall handing over the championship trophy to this year's champion, Scott Steckley. Scott Steckley, the heavyweight in the sport, hoist in the hardware, a proud man from Milverton, Ontario. Smile of a champion and a congratulations to the entire 22 racing team. The Pinty's 250 has been brought to you by Pinty's, the official wingman of NASCAR in Canada. By WeatherCheck, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Honeygoo, by Clean Flow, a honey of a loop. They're getting ready with the champagne in victory lane. It's about to pop, and Billy, this is what a sweet celebration should feel like. Well, when you win four championships, going home smelling like the bubbly is a great thing. <laughs> they got a long off season to wash those crew uniforms, and what a season it has been for Clinton, Todd, Billy, and all of us here at Fuel Media Lab. I'm Dave Bradley. Thanks very much for joining us, and we hope to see you in 2016.
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.